Okay, so now we're going to learn how to start to animate in Flash. Um, we went over some of the tools. So I just pulled up Flash and under Create New, you're just going to click Action Script 3.0. Okay? And we're just going to go over some of the things you should look for first. Um, he, right here in the center, this is called the stage. So if I'm ever referring to um, put that object on the stage, this is what I'm talking about, the white square. And anything in there is what is going to show in your animation. So if there's something off of this stage, it could still be there, but it's not going to show up um, in your animation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Modify, Document, click into that, and I'm just going to look at the dimensions. 550 by 400 is a good, um, some good dimensions. Uh, it's more of a standard size. If you're going to go HD, uh, it's going to be a little different, but we're just going to, we'll be fine with that for now. Usually that's the default. Um, also, I want to point out at the bottom here, you can choose a background color. We're just going to leave it white right now. And I click the gray, so I'm going to go back to the white. And down here is the frame rate. And you can move it back and forth using this arrow, but you want to generally keep it on 24, um, which I can't get back to. There we go. And what that means is for every 24 frames in this animation, it's going to equal one second. So I'm just going to press OK. And you can also see the frame rate down here under FPS. That stands for frames per second. And you can change it down here too. So you can see the little arrow. But it says 24, so I'm going to keep it there. And when I'm talking about frames, what I'm talking about is each of these little squares. So each of these squares is a keyframe. So for 24, you can see they're numbered up here. So right here would be the 24th frame. That would be one second of animation. So it seems like a lot. Um, this whole area right here, it's called the timeline. So that's where you're going to be doing a lot of your commands for your animation. Right here, you can see that there's an open circle in the first keyframe. That means that there's nothing on the stage. So if I was to go to the shape tool here, I have rectangle. I'm going to select the oval tool. And I'm actually going to, if you remember, we talked about this when we talked about the toolbar. If you have this selected in gray, that means that you have an object and everything's going to move with it. Okay? I'm going to have that off. I just, I like to have that selected off. It lets you edit the object more. So I'm going to draw this circle. And now you can see if I select it, that just selects the inside. If I double click, it'll select both. Okay? But if you Notice down in the first keyframe now that circle is filled, so it's not open anymore, and the keyframe's gray. That means that there's something on that keyframe. Um, so I'm going to actually select this again, double click because it's not an object, and bring this off of the page. Okay, what we're going to create today is a or I should say an animation of a ball bouncing. So I want to have it start off of the page. That way it's coming into the animation rather than starting in the animation. So I'm fine with it being here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a frame by frame animation, which means each frame we're putting in um, the movement of the object. So I'm going to go to the next frame. I'm going to press F6. And when I press F6 on the keyboard, you can see it made another keyframe right there. And it's the exact same keyframe as the one before. And you can tell that if you scrub this playhead, this is the playhead, and scrubbing is when you go back and forth, um, you can see that they're the, exactly the same. So I don't want them to be exactly the same because I want one to move. This is where it starts. Now I want to 
select this next keyframe and make the next move. So let's move this to start coming onto the page. And I want to do that again for the next keyframe a little further. So I'm going to press F6. I'm going to move it a little more. And it's remember, it's starting to fall. I'm going to press F6 and move it a little more. And if I wanted to extend this, what I could do is press F5. And F5 will extend it. So now you can see it's all on these keyframes, but not on these ones. These are empty, so um, it extends it so it's all on those keyframes. And that will keep it there longer. I don't want that, so I'm just going to shift F5. We'll delete it. So F5 will add keyframes. Shift F5 will delete them. Um, but if you actually want to copy the keyframe so you can edit, then you need to press F6. So we're going to press F6 again because we want to edit it. We don't want to just extend it. So F6. And this will all, once you do this a couple times, it'll make more sense. And it'll get in, in your mind and you'll remember. So what I want to do is we're, I'm going to pull up this picture here. When we're animating, we want to use the squash and stretch technique, and it kind of exaggerates the movement of the ball. If you look at this top layer here, this is keeping the ball exactly perfectly round on its way down, bounces on its way up, and it just it makes the ball look really hard like it's a baseball, and it really doesn't look like it should be bouncing. Um, if you look down here at the bottom, they're using the squash and stretch technique. Um, and you can see it, the ball starts to stretch on its way down. And then when it hits the ground, it squashes and starts to uh, stretch on its way up. And it really just kind of gives you a better feeling of the material, emphasizes the movement, and really even though it looks less realistic when it's... Uh, kind of just there, it will look a lot more, um, it will look a lot better when it's animated. And you can even try out the two if you wanted to make the first one and see how that animation compares to the second one, then go ahead. But So we're going to use this, and you know, a lot of times they'll use it in characters' faces and things when they're smiling and um, doing different expressions, so look for that next time you're watching cartoons. But anyways, let's go back and start stretching this. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use a free transform tool. If you wanted, you could pull like these edges, but I find that it doesn't stay as uniform. So I'm just gonna double click again so that I have the inside and the, and the fill. And I'm just gonna pull it a little bit and I'm gonna just rotate that a little bit. And let's look at how that starts to stretch. I might even pull it. Oops, see, I didn't double click. Contr uh, Command Z will just easily undo on the keyboard. Double click. And I'm just going to pull it a little forward. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing. F6, it's going to copy the keyframe that's right in front of it. I'm going to move it. I might stretch it a little more. I don't want to make it too big though. You know what? What you can do also, like I would love to see the next, the ones before to compare the size, the shape, um, the movement. So what I'm going to go down to is this little button on the bottom that says onion skin. And I'm going to press that and you can see it shows me some of the frames before. And right here, that's the frames it's showing me. So if you want more frames selected, you can just pull that and you see now it's showing me all of those. Um, if I wanted to see less, you can see less. It's not letting me because that's where I am right now. But um, So I need to go back and I'm just going to edit this to make it fit a little better. This other one for it. Double click. Maybe I want it to start going down. Here we go. Not perfect, but it will 
want to. I'm gonna just set it a little more. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna do F6 again. F6. Maybe I wanna do it a little more. And you can keep scrubbing through with the playhead to kind of see how it's looking. If you ever don't want the onion skin on, you can just press that again, it'll go away. F6. Oops. F6. And then you can start to squash it. want to keep it right in that same spot because that's where it's hitting the ground. And always remember, try and keep it relatively like the same size, not like it turns into this humongous ball all of a sudden. See how that looks? Not bad. It's a little um, choppy right there. So what I can do is just go back again and see if that looks a little better. And then it's going to do the same thing on the, the way up. It's going to start stretching again. That can get flattened a little more. I started one before that I just made really quickly. Let's see if I can just find it here. Um, I'm going to delete this layer. And let's test the scene so you can see that's how it should pretty much look at the end. Um, I think that I could have even stretched the ball and squashed it a little more in this, so just keep that in mind when you make your own.